The other day, Java Napoli left a comment on my Geometry Notes Create Development video asking if it's possible to use a proximity object to change things like an object's color or emission strength. And yes, it is possible, thanks to the Geometry Notes system allowing you to take values from the node tree and exposing them to other parts of Blender as a custom output. So let's take a look at how to do that. Duplicate the default cube with Shift D, then move it to the side. Rename the new cube to Instance. Then in the Materials tab, add a new material. Then rename the material to Proximity. Select the original cube, then head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace and press New to add a new node tree. To illustrate the proximity effect, let's instance some cubes on the original cube. Add a distribute points on Faces node, a Join Geometry node, and an instance on Points node. Connect the geometry from the group input to the Join Geometry node. That way we can keep the original cube. Connect that same geometry to the Distribute Points node. Then connect that node to the Points socket of the Instance on Points node. And finally, connect that node to the Join Geometry node as well. Next, either drag the Instance cube from the Outliner into the node tree, or add an Object Info node, and select the Instance cube in the dropdown. Then connect it to the Instance socket of the Instance on Points node. So now that we have Instance on Cubes, we will need an object to use as the proximity object. A UV sphere works fine for our purposes, so add one to the scene. Then drag it into the node tree like before, and make sure that the object info node is set to relative, since we want to use the position of the sphere relative to the cube. Add a geometry proximity node, two math nodes set to multiply, and a float curve node. The geometry proximity node returns either the positions of the proximity object's vertices, edges or faces, depending on the element that you have selected in the node, that are closest to each corresponding element of the original geometry, or the shortest distance of each corresponding element. Of course, if we just set the distance as a scale factor of the instance on points node, we will get the opposite effect of what we want, since the bigger the distance is, the bigger the scale will be. One way to reverse the factor is by using a float curve node and switching the height of the points in the graph. This way we can also create a gradient falloff instead of a linear one. As a final correction to the scale, we can use a multiply node before the float curve node to adjust how far the falloff will reach. And the other multiply node after the float curve node to adjust the final scaling factor. Now if we move around the proximity object, the scale of the instance cubes should change depending on their distance to it. Before moving on to the shading, there are two things we need to do. First, we need to add a realized instances node before the group output. I will explain why after we have modified the proximity material. And lastly, we need to connect the last multiply node to an empty socket of the group output. Press N to open the property sidebar, then change the name of the output to Distance. If we go to the Modifiers tab and click the Output Attributes in the modifier, there is now an output called Distance, as well as a text field next to it. In this text field we can give the output a name that can then be used elsewhere in Blender, for example in the shader. So in the text field, we name the output to Dist. Then head over to the shading workspace, and select the cube with the proximity material. Besides the already present principle BSDF, we only need two nodes, an attribute node and a color ramp. Connect the factor of the attribute node to the color ramp, then connect the color of the color ramp to the base color of the principle BSDF. And finally, in the name field of the attribute node, type the name of the geometry node's output, dist in my case. With the attribute node, we are extracting the values of the distance output from a node tree. We are then adjusting the gradient of those values with the color ramp to get better control of the falloff. So now, if we move around the proximity object, the instance cubes are changing color as well as scale. 
While the proximity scaling works on instances, the shading is only applied correctly on real geometry, which is why we added a realized instances node to the node tree. Because without it, the default value for each cube will be zero, which in the shader will represent whatever color you have at the left side in the color ramp. And that's how you affect the shading using a proximity object in Blender. From here you can use the distance and dist attribute for other things besides just changing colors. For example, here I'm using the proximity distance to control the emission strength of a material. And here I'm instead using the distance as the factor of a mixed shader node to mix between a principal BSDF and a transparent shader. Essentially, once you have access to the proximity distance in the shader, you can use it to control whatever you want. Even roughness? Yes. Metallic? Yes. Noise scale? Yes. W val- uh, Okay, yeah, I think you get it. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.